Yo, 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 what's going on, y'all? It's your boy Lou Sid back with another video for the vending machine business. Shout out to everybody who has been showing love to the original video, the one month recap video that I did. Make sure you subscribe to the channel. I'm gonna be dropping a lot more videos here over the next week or so, trying to answer a lot of those questions that y'all been asking in the original video and the one month recap video, all right? Thank you for asking those questions, man. A lot of y'all's questions were similar, so I wanna try to answer those questions and detailed videos after this one being more specific to you guys all right but today we're gonna go see how much those machines have been making in this first six months any issues that came along the way i'm gonna try to be very detailed about that because i want y'all to know exactly what you might run into with this and how to handle it if it come up or how to avoid it you know what i'm saying so we're gonna go see how they doing let's go over to this first location over at the u-haul see how that's doing and then we're gonna go from there all right let's get it so one of the things before we get into it man a lot of people was asking was you know what is my purpose with vending machines like is it my main source of income or is it like a side hustle for me it is definitely a side hustle for me man i do have a main source of income and really you know i see this as more like a savings plans for me man for my kids you know what i'm saying like it's something that over time i just want to allow to accumulate you know all the income that comes from it i don't want to spend it you know once i pay off the you know initial debts that i you know had from you know taking out whatever to pay for the the machines when i first started i just wanted to you know let that money build over time you know what i'm saying that's kind of like a main reason why i'm really taking my time with it i'm not rushing um i still have my first three machines you know i've been offered other locations since i started and i didn't jump at them unless it really really made sense and a lot of times the the situation just don't make sense you know like it can be a location that might sound good on paper but when you get you know to looking into the details of you know how many people work there how often is it open how accessible is it you know what i'm saying being that i have a location where there are two different situations I know which one is gonna do better than the other or which one ain't gonna do so well. So I know when to say no, you know what I'm saying? Like, I'm real patient with that. I'm not gonna rush and just have a bunch of locations losing money, putting items in it and nobody's buying it. So, you know, for me, it's like, I'm gonna let it build over time. I'm only gonna take locations that make sense that I really feel like I'm gonna make money at and I'm gonna let the other ones walk. And the money that comes in, will go towards, you know, saving and keeping in a space where I feel like I don't have to use that because I do have my main source of income. So that's how I see it, man. You know, vending machines for me is like passive income. I only have to go to the locations, you know, uh, once every maybe two or three weeks. You know what I mean? Unless there's an issue. At the U-Haul location, I did have a period where there were issues um when i switched the machine out the new machine had some things going on that i had to address and i'm gonna show y'all at the machine you know what those issues were and how i ended up having them fixed and corrected and if this is your main source of income you definitely want to approach it maybe a little more aggressively than i have i'm perfectly fine with taking my time with that man because like i said i just wanted to be making money over there and then the money that come in just goes into a savings pot and over you know the course of 15 20 whatever years that i'm owning these joints that savings just builds you know what i mean i never touch it regardless of what i'm putting out for the stock you know what i'm saying that's why i don't look at it as a loss to put the stock in because you know whatever goes into that i won't really see the loss of it when in the end when i collect to go see what all i save it's just the large lump sum in there you feel me so we're gonna head over to the u-haul now and let's go check these machines out all right, as y'all can see here, man, I got my two machines here at the U-Haul location. One drink machine, one snack machine, just like in the previous videos. Still doing well. Um, just stocked these recently. Uh, I'll give y'all a look around here at the U-Haul location. Um, they have improved this waiting area where the machines are. They turned it more into a lobby. They send the clients back here. They got the chairs here for all the clients that are waiting when they get long lines. And they also have an auto body shop here as well where they work on cars. So um, back over to the machine, man. We're going to start with the snack machine. I'm going to go ahead and crack this joint open. We'll take a look inside, man. Um, as you can see, pretty well stocked up right now, except for a few items. Um, we'll go up here. Uh, one of my best-selling items right now, man, is these Doritos Sweet 
spicy sweet chili chips. Um, they used to be white cheddar popcorn. Um, I thought they would sell well when I first got the machine. They did not do well at all. They were barely selling. So I switched them out to these just to try them out. They sold really well in the first batch, so I ended up stocking them full. Um, that's one of my best sellers right now. Second, another best seller is the Honey Buns. Um, these Honey Buns just sold out. That's actually a part of the reason why I came to do the video today. The Honey Buns sold out. I had to replace them. I do have them. I'm going to stock them after I do the video today. Um, but, you know, they just sold out. I try to stay on top of these and any other item that sell out. That's what you want to do, man. You want to stay on top of whatever is selling out so you can restock them because those are what's making you money. Um, after that... Uh, we got these gummies over here. I'm trying these out. Uh, there was an item here that wasn't selling before. I switched them out for the gummies. We'll see how those do, um, if they stay or go. Um, after that, man, this row here, man, this, this is the row that really be selling. All these Skittles, Starburst, they sell crazy. There's a blue, star, uh, a blue Skittles pack that goes in that missing row between the purple and the red that sold out. They'll get restocked when the rest of these Skittles go down, and I'll restock those. Um, after that... Down at the bottom, man, the Funyuns. These Funyuns be selling crazy, too. Um, they're a little funny sitting in here. I'm going to fix them in a little bit, but Funyuns been selling well. Those like one of my top five selling items as well. So there you have it, man, the machine looking well. Um, I went ahead and took out the dollars from the machine. These came out of the cash acceptor. I'm going to put those in my lucky shoe box that I use whenever I collect. All right, so now we're going to move over to the drink machine. This usually brings in more money on average. Um, this this sells like crazy, especially now that it's getting hotter. Um, so we'll take a look inside. Um, as you can see, I stocked these recently, especially some of these other ones that was lower. They're stocked to the top. The other ones were more in the middle or starting to come down to the bottom. Gatorade's been selling crazy during the summer. Um, it's getting hotter, so the Gatorade's been selling. The Dr. Peppers always sell crazy here. That's like their favorite drink. I have to stock those ones um, pretty frequently. The last three on the side, the Pepsi Sprite and the Mountain Dew, I just stocked recently. Um, got to get those Dr. Peppers in quick, man, because like I said, they, they drink those up here, so I got to fill those up pretty soon. Then I got the Monsters, the Rock Stars, and the Orange Sodas in there as well. Um, An issue that I was having here, man, these Orange Sodas, when they was vending, they were getting stuck sliding down. The ramp here, they were getting stuck behind this door. Like, they weren't pushing through to fall through so the person could reach in and grab their drink. Um, I didn't understand it first until I came out, tried to vent it myself, and saw, like, the, the sun kiss were getting stuck behind the door. So what I had to do was I contacted the distributor. He told me to get some silicone spray and spray it on that ramp down there. And then once I sprayed the, the ramp down with the silicone spray, I wiped it down. They started to slide easily just like that, a little bit more force, didn't get stuck. I guess they were getting kind of stuck on the ramp. So now they push through the door, they land in there as they should. It fixed it, pretty fixable problem. So if you have that issue where drinks are getting stuck behind the door, not pushing through, silicone spray, wipe it down, fixed it like nothing. The other issue that I was having here, man, these monsters were in a row down at the end where... At the end of the vending machine here, you can see that last row is where the, vent, where the monsters were, and they were not vending when the people were paying for it. It was just like the, ro the motor would spin, but the monster wouldn't drop. So I had to come out and switch the monsters to a whole other row, and I'm going to have a tech actually fix that last row because I want to put drinks in that row so that I can have some income coming in from that row. Um, other issue, man, my change was getting low, quarters, dimes, they were running out. Never got stuck here where it was all the way out, but a time when I came out, I did see they were very low, and I ended up just using change that I had in the machine to restock it. Worked out well because it was a lot in there and still left some down at the bottom um, for the next time. Go ahead and take the cash out of the machine here. As you can see, a lot more cash in the drink machine. We'll count it up figure out how much it is, but you can see it gives five, it takes $5 bills as well, so the change has to be in the machine, man, because when a person pays with a $5 bill, they buy a $1.25 soda, they need they change in quarters, you know what I mean? So we'll put this in with the other cash, we'll total that up. You really want to get into a habit of addressing any issues or complaints, man, in a timely manner because, you know, 
ultimately these machines are servicing the staff. Like a lot of times it may be their only source of, you know, snacks and drinks, like water on their shift, depending on what's around the location. And, you know, these owners, you know, they feel kind of responsible for that. You know, they want to have that accessible to their staff so that they're happy, you know, or have the chance to, you know, eat or drink whenever they feel a need to, to go right over and handle it at the vending machine. And if items are always out of stock or they're spending money and losing money at the machine, like these are things that's going to draw problems for the owner when they come to complain and they can't figure out why it keeps happening because you're not coming to service the machine. So um, you want to stay on top of that, man. Keep the owner happy. Keep your rapport with them good because, you know, over time, you don't want them to start seeing you as someone who's not like taking care of your business and then they may want you out. You know, you may lose the location. So you want to stay on top of that, man, and, you know, be about your business and do your due diligence on keeping it stocked. Keep changing the machine. Um, you know, I put my phone number on the machine and tell them like any questions or any issues reach out to me, you know, and I try to get back to them either immediately in the next day, you know, so that they know like, okay, if I do lose a dollar or two here, especially the staff, I know that if I reach out to him, he'll get back to me. You know, when I had the issues here with the the sodas not pushing through the door and venting, um, I had to spray the area down with silicone spray, ran out of change. These were all during the period where I was down you know, with the injury and I couldn't get out here in a timely matter. So, um, you know, staff were hitting me up about, you know, not getting changed back. And I didn't really like that. You know, I wanted to keep that um, understanding that, you know, it's my responsibility to service the machine. I need to get out there and take care of it. So once I got back on my feet and I found ways to do that, even while I was injured, to come out here and make sure that I was taking care of my responsibilities, man, because ultimately it does fall on you and you know quickly they can move on and say hey, we want you out we'll, we'll find another vendor so um stay on top of your stocking man keep changing the machine keep the keep the staff happy man whatever they want you know make sure you put in the machine like when i first came out here i, I put white cheddar popcorn in the machine thinking that it would sell you know what i'm saying because that's something i like but it didn't sell and then i switched it to the sweet chili doritos you know, and those sold instantly. Like I had to come back out and fill up the rack. You know what I'm saying? You know, uh, they like Skittles. All the different packs of Skittles sell well here. The Starburst, um, the famous Amos cookies, Funyuns, all these items are items that were not in there when I started. And then I had to try it out and figure out what worked and what didn't. So I really wanted to pace myself with that. Um, not get too many machines out the gate, keep it to a workable, you know, uh, workload so that I could learn this business, you know, I had to, I knew mistakes would be a thing, like issues with, you know, just the mechanisms of the machine. And once I, you know, started dealing with those issues, I, was, I knew this would come. I'm glad I didn't take on too many locations. I was offered, you know, from locators, other locations, but um, looking into the details of it versus what I already have, I knew like, nah, that's just going to be a waste of money. I'm going to buy a machine. I'm going to put it there. It's not going to make money. And it's good that I have a location here where I make, you know, a good monthly income at one spot like this. And then I have this link, the senior living facility where I'm still trying to figure that out. So we'll go over to the senior living facility. We'll see how much it made um, this month. I'm going to show you guys, you know, all the six month accumulation of how well or, I you know, not well it's done. But um We'll go over to the senior living facility. The issues I've had over there is just accessibility for me. I feel like they keep the machine inside of a commons area that's not always accessible to the, to the tenants that live there. It is a Saturday. I'm not even sure if I'm going to be able to get in because they keep that door locked a lot of times on the weekend. So I never really know when it's open or closed. So we'll go over there, collect. I'll show you the coin jam issue I had over there. I had a coin jam issue with the machine over there, man. They were hitting me up saying it wasn't giving change back. And um, I'm thinking it was out of change. So I rushed with all the change that I had. And when I got there, it was still fully stocked with change. It was just a jagged quarter at the bottom of the uh, quarter slot that wouldn't allow for any of the quarters to get pushed through. So I had to fix that coin jam. And I'm gonna post another video showing how to fix a coin jam on these machines with the uh, model that I have. And um, yeah, man, we'll see how that living facility is doing. Hopefully it's doing better than it was doing at that one month mark. But 
Um, you know, ultimately, if it's not, that may be a location that I may have to look into selling and um, passing on to someone else, you know what I'm saying, and moving my machine somewhere else. So let's move over there to the senior living facility and see how it goes. Yeah, so unfortunately, I was unable to access the my machine at the uh, senior living facility. The commons area was closed today. I couldn't even get onto the premises. They have a uh, access gate to get onto the premises and usually you gotta call the office to get in. I called the number, nobody picked up. I waited for a little bit, nobody came. Then my camera ended up dying, so ended up having to come home to charge my camera as well. So, wasn't able to access it. Um, that's one of the many problems that I've expressed about that location. Um, and I think what may end up happening is I may have to move that machine. I have to find another location that is looking for a snack machine, which is what I have there. And um, I'm probably going to end up moving that to a, a different location. We've tried, I tried to, uh, you know, talk to management there and try and get the machine moved out into the commons area. But apparently um, that's a vulnerable situation for the city that it's in. A lot of the tenants there are older and they have guests that come over and They've said that, you know, those guests are risk for, you know, vandalizing the machine or whatsoever. But and I, I trust them on that opinion. Um, I want to make more money, but I don't want the machine to be vandalized. So, um, you know, that may be a situation that I may just have to venture away from, you know, try and error, trial and error. Maybe just not a good location for actual machine. They may be better fit for like having their own snacks over there that the tenants can just come down and buy. So we'll see about that. But right now, um, I'm going to show y'all the totals from each machine, how much they've made so far. Um, I'll add in, you know, the money that I was making at the beginning when I didn't have my NIAX card readers on there. And um, they used to have the other um, system on there. I can't remember the name of it off the top of my head right now, but uh, I'll add all that in. Those totals are in the first video that I made. I'll put them with the total that I'm about to show y'all now, show y'all what NIAX looks like. And um, then we'll come back and we'll wrap up, man. So let's take a look at how much each machine has made in these six months. All right, as you can see here, this is the home dashboard for NIAX. This is the NIAX card reader dashboard. It shows how many machines you have um, based on how many card readers you have. And then it shows how many you have connected to the machines. And then the last two tabs will show you how many are down or having issues being online. These two here, this one to the right shows the map of where your locations are, and the left shows, you know, your sales in the last 24 hours. This one shows your sales over the last period, however you selected. I have it to the last 12 months. It shows the six months of this year that I've had them in full operations and the little bit of December that I started with last year. Um, down here, you'll see the credit card and cash totals are separated. It does show you, you know, individual transactions the credit card totals around 1631 the cash totals around seven hundred dollars bringing it to the total of about 2330 for the year from the machine you add that with the pay range from the previous owners that they were sending me at the beginning it's been around 2500 for the year so far so for these first six months around 2500 dollars income all right man so you know that's like a six month you know recap of how things have been going thus far with the vending machines um go over a couple of the issues that i've had so far one more time for you um big thing was the coin jam i'm um, at the senior living facility coin jam wasn't giving the tenants their change back that's a big problem that's a common problem that vending machines have i haven't had it outside of that one problem so um a coin jam is one Two was the monsters not bending at the drink machine at the U-Haul location. Um, had a problem with the actual lane that it was in. I had to switch it to another lane. I'm still going to have someone service that lane and fix it because that's another lane of drinks that can be servicing. And um, I want to get something in there. I might have the U-Haul the um, staff tell me exactly what they want in there. Um, three was um, the orange sodas when they vend it. They were getting stuck behind the door, wasn't pushing the door out. Apparently they weren't vending um, fast enough or getting stuck on the actual um, slope that it comes down. Had to spray that down with silicone spray, wipe it with a rag. That was the solution for that. Um, the distributor actually told me that and it worked like a charm. Never had to um, go back in and fix that or worry about that again. Um, number four, the fourth issue that I had 
over there at the U-Haul location was um, running out of change and that wasn't giving change back. So keeping change in the machine, uh, that's something you gotta monitor. Uh, it hasn't been as frequent as an issue. The drink machine tends to get lower because over there they drink up all the Gatorades and Dr. Pepper real quick and they use $5 bills over there. The $5 bills give back a lot of change in quarters and dimes, so make sure you stay on top of that. Um, I would say outside of that, it's really just timeliness. You know, I had the injury, so I was kind of behind on, you know, getting out and servicing when I needed to, but that's an issue because when people have, you know, complaints or they, they get, they need refunds, you got to get that stuff back to them in a timely manner or you're going to become the guy that doesn't respond to, you know, um, issues or problems. And that's how you start bad, building a bad rapport with the people that you're supposed to be working with. So they may want you out of there because they feel like they're not getting the proper service from you you as a vendor. So um, stay on top of that timely matter with stocking, keeping things in the machine from snacks to the change to the drinks. Outside of that, knowing what is selling versus isn't selling. You know, be mindful of what's just sitting in the machine, not moving, even if it's not one or two at a time. Some of these items, they, they not selling at all. You know what I'm saying? You got to be mindful of that. It can't just be like, oh, I'm, I'm fully stocked. These items go out of, they expire, right? So, you know, if something's just sitting there and you think you good because it's fully stocked, that's not necessarily the truth because you also running out of time on the expiration. So if you got items in your machine that's not selling, that's a bad thing because those items are going to expire and ultimately you just wasted money on those items. Nobody's buying them. You spent money on them. It is a no return on investment for those uh, snacks. So definitely make sure whatever you're putting in the machine is selling. You know what I'm saying? Like, and monitor it. Like, if it's moving slow, slow slow selling is better than no selling. You know what I mean? Like, make sure that it's at least moving. But if they moving fast, think about buying those items individually. You know what I'm saying? Like, buying a bag of, like, I had to buy a bag of sweet chili Doritos a box of them that's just those instead of buying a box that had multiple chips in it with those in there because that specific chip sell faster than the rest of the chips so um i ended up having to buy that item individually so my monitor that know what you're selling the best out know what's selling the best and know what's selling the worst stuff you can buy in bulk by itself versus buying you know in conjunction with other things and um that's really it man like i said for me I don't put like so much emphasis on how much I'm spending on stock. I'm I'm definitely trying to save. I buy at Sam's Club and I definitely try to, you know, not overbuy and use what I have in stock first. But um my mindset is everything that come in from the machines goes untouched. You know what I mean? It goes to the, the account that it's in, all the money from NIAX, they take their percentage and they send it to my account that's linked to it. And I don't mess with that. I don't use that card. I don't take no money out of there. And my plan is over, you know, the span of years to uh, to continue that until, you know, either my kids grow up and that's, you know, their, you know, I mean, graduation, you know what I mean, form of a trust fund or something that I can give them to say, you know, get started on, you know, your path to do whatever you want to do. You know what I'm saying? So that's my plan for it. I plan to only have locations that make money, you know, similar to what I got at the U-Haul location. I really don't want to be in too many locations like the senior living facility where I got to, you know, figure it out or struggle through it and it's not really making me no money. That don't make sense. So my advice would just be vet these places, man. Talk to the location. Figure out how much traffic is really there, how much they really want the machine, how much is really going to be used how accessible it's really gonna be on a day-to-day -day basis and what hours, and really think about it before you just press yes, because everybody wanna do something don't mean like that's the right thing to do. Just because you wanna do it don't mean it's right. You know what I'm saying? Every place that want a machine don't necessarily need a vending machine. You know what I'm saying? You gotta know what's going, how much energy and money it's gonna cost you to have it there and if it's gonna be a good return on investment. You feel me? So uh, always like really, really, go through and make sure that you know it's worth your business and lastly man a lot of y'all been asking for contracts you know when you talk to the location like how do you 
set up your contract. I am going to provide y'all with a contract in the bio, man. Um, it's a link to a contract that you know I made, I used based off of one that I was given and other ones that I've seen in the business and keep it simple, you know what I'm saying? It's a very simple contract. It comes, you know, broken down into, you know, different sections based on like what your responsibilities are, the term, you know, where the location is, all those things just iron out and then, you know, both parties sign. Um, I make sure I got a 30 day window period on termination, meaning if they don't, if they decide they don't want it there, I get 30 days to remove it from the location because it takes time to move in and move out these machines. And I will also give them the same grace if I tell them that I'm going to take it out. You know, if they want to keep the service there for 30 more days, you know, that's up to them. <clears throat> but at that 30th day, I will buy the 30th day. I will have the machine out of there. Um, that's completely um, negotiable. But um, I will provide the contract down in the bio, man. So y'all have access to that. Um, make sure you subscribe to the channel, man. I'm going to drop a few more videos breaking down that contract as well and um some other videos based on like fixing coin jams um a couple other things that i had in the comments from the first video i'm gonna try to address in individual videos for y'all so make sure y'all subscribe man i hope y'all like the video um stay tuned for the next stream some music while you're on the channel man y'all see i dropped you know a new record um about a week and a half ago called make it home i got more music coming man tapping with the music stream something on spotify apple music i'm on all of that See y'all in the next video. Y'all be easy.